riddle for you. What's something natural that we use almost every day? In fact, we couldn't survive a whole week without it. No one could. Not people, not animals, not plants. We all need it. And in fact, it's so common, we oftentimes see it as a liquid, as a solid, and as a gas. Here's another hint. We probably have it running through the walls that you're in right now. If you guess water, you're right. We use water for so many things, most of the things in our daily lives. Can you think of 10 things that you use water for? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Here's what I got. Drinking, playing in the pool, washing the dishes, washing the car, bathrooms, cooking, watering our plants. We use water for so many more things, and some things you might not even realize. To find out what some of those are, let's ask my friend Scott. Ooh, hey Scott! The typical person in California uses about 80 gallons of water each day in their home. While that seems like a lot of water, it's actually only a small fraction of the total amount you use. In reality, 90% of the water we use is hidden in the production of our food. Take, for example, a typical hamburger. One pound of beef uses 1,800 gallons of water, which means that making 40 hamburgers is enough to fill an entire swimming pool. That sounds pretty crazy, right? But let's think about that for a moment. If you were to eat corn, you'd first have to water that corn so it can grow. Now hamburgers are made up of cows, and cows eat corn, but they eat six times their weight in corn. That means you need at least six times as much water to produce a hamburger than if you were to just eat the corn alone. It really adds up. So the next time you sit down to dinner with your family, think about how much water is needed just to grow the food that you and your family are eating. Okay, so we use all of this water on a daily basis and most of our world is covered in water. But have you ever thought about where our water actually comes from? The water on our planet is an ancient and limited resource. Many scientists believe that our water originated from asteroids that slammed into our planet millions of years ago. That means that the water that we use today was used by the ancient Egyptians and even the dinosaurs. Let's have a look at the water cycle. Icy snowpack melts and makes lakes or natural reservoirs and fills underground aquifers. Water evaporates all over again and the water cycle continues again. Okay, great. But where do we in Southern California get our water? Desert regions like Southern California have to import their water from faraway places like the Sacramento Delta, the Colorado River, and the Sierra Nevada Mountains. They do this through a complex series of aqueducts, dams, reservoirs, and pipelines. Along the way, this water gets used in lots of places. In cities, on farms or factories, and in the natural parks and mountains and forests. So, Caroline, what happens to this water when we use it? After we use it, water can get back into rivers, streams, and oceans. But humans also put waste into our waterways, such as plastics, pesticides, trash, and even chemical and hazardous waste. This affects humans, ecosystems, and wildlife. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Santa Ana River. This river is in Southern California. And water in this river comes from many different places, such as springs underground, snow melt from the mountains in the San Bernardinos, and recycled water from cities such as Riverside. This river is a thriving ecosystem. Ecosystems are systems that have many different organisms and animals in general in them to survive for their livelihoods. We have fish in this river, we have insects, we have uh, endangered bird species. All of these critters are living here and rely on this river to survive. And that's why it's very important to always conserve and recycle the water that we have in our city. Without our recycling our water, this river ceases to exist. So one important question would be, how does water that looks like this go to something to this? So this is water fresh from a stream or a pond or a reservoir, but as you can see, it's not so clean. It's not so fresh. 
not quite pristine. It's got germs, dirt, and other stuff in it that we don't really need. So we need to clean it up. But how though? That's a good question, Sam. So let's split it up first. Sam, I think we gotta get rid of the chunks. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We can use this wire mesh screen. Mesh? It's got about a two millimeter thing. And we're gonna very carefully pour it through. Look at everything we got, Sam. It's still pretty cloudy. It's pretty gross, right? So the way we're gonna clean it up is using flocculation. Wait, what did you say, Sam? Look, look, look. Look at how it's spelled. Oh, flocculation. Flocculation. Right, so these are our flocculants. They're called alum, and we've made a solution of this alum. Let's just uh, mix it up. Tiny particles inside that are making it all cloudy are gonna clump up and fall to the bottom. So let's wait. First we have a cotton ball. And then we add sand. And now we have our filter. And all this is doing is catching the little bitty particles that didn't quite settle out. With just sand and cotton to keep the sand from coming through. So we started here and we ended here. And then we use a little chlorine, just like you do for your pool, to keep it clean. So we just learned that the water coming out of our faucets, what we call tap water, originally comes from natural sources like lakes or rivers or streams. But there's another kind of water that brags about being from a natural source. Bottled water. So if bottled water and tap water are different, we have to ask ourselves, is there any water that isn't natural? To find out the answer, let's ask my friend Parisa. Hey, hey Daniel. Hey Parisa. So, if you think this is a trick question, you guessed right. For the most part, water, whether it comes from a tap or whether it comes from a bottle, is natural. Words like natural, pure, and fresh are often used to describe bottled water in advertisements. So when you hear words like this, you probably think of water that looks something like this. And what do we feel? Probably something like this. We often describe tap water with words like recycled and wastewater. When you hear those words, you probably think of water that looks something like this. And what do we feel? Probably something like this. But really, both tap and bottled water are the same level of natural. In fact, this is a spring. And bottled water starts out looking something like this. So the words that we use to describe water can make us feel different emotions about one type of water versus a different type of water. And even though we might feel one way about one type of water or another, remember that our emotions aren't always accurate. Both tap water and bottled water are natural, and both go through an extensive treatment process before they make their way to your home or store. But by and large, the water that comes out of our faucet is clean and safe to drink. Tastes good too. Let's go ask our friend Scott why it's important for us with clean drinking water to use our tap water. Water bottles sure are convenient, but have you ever thought about what happens after you use the bottle? Less than one in 10 plastic bottles are recycled in the United States, which means that many of them end up in landfills. Or worse, every 20 seconds, the equivalent of a garbage truck of plastic enters our oceans. At this rate, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish by the year 2050. And speaking of fish, they and most marine animals often confuse plastic for prey. Just like you wouldn't want to eat plastic, I bet a dolphin wouldn't either. Plastic water bottles account for about 10% of the debris in the ocean, which if we stack the bottles on top of each other, there would be enough to go to the moon and back. We just learned that the water on Earth is all the water we'll ever have, and we need to share with every living creature on the planet. So we don't want to pollute it, waste it, or fill it up with trash. So what are some things that we can do to conserve our water? When brushing your teeth, turn off the water. And take shorter showers. So the next time you need to transport water, why not use a reusable bottle? 
If you don't like the taste of tap water, try adding some ice cubes. You can also add some fruit, lemon wedges, or sliced cucumber. It's okay to eat meat, but maybe try to eat less of it. Try a meatless Monday with a bowl of a veggie spaghetti. Try not to water your lawn during the day, or better yet, consider replacing your lawn with drought-resistant plants. Throw things away in the garbage, not your toilet. Remember, what we put in our water can get back into our rivers and oceans. We all want to enjoy our water, so show your appreciation by speaking up when you see water waste. And remember, we're all in this together. Water! Get, get out your seats! I'm getting kind of thirsty in here. Water, 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 water cycle. Sing it. Round and round and round goes the water cycle. Water, 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 water cycle. Come on, y'all get down with the water cycle. Let's do it. Here we go. Precipitation. Water falls down. Accumulation. Water gathers all around. Evaporation. Water rising from the ground. Transpiration. Flint sweat the water out. Condensation. Water turns into a cloud. When the cloud gets heavy, the water cycle just keeps going round. Precipitation, water falls down. Accumulation, water gathers all around. Evaporation, water rising from the ground. Transpiration, plants sweat the water out. Condensation, water turns into a cloud. The cloud gets heavy. What happens? It just keeps going round. Oh, that's really dope, actually. Water, 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 water cycle. Round and round and round goes the water cycle. Water, 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 water cycle. Come on, y'all get down with the water cycle. Precipitation, we're talking rain.